Hello there. Many of you have asked for a tutorial on my Asato Sur contest entry. The title of the track is called MAT. If you haven't yet checked it out, then do go ahead and click the link at the top right to get familiar with that before we embark on this tutorial. And by the way, if you know what MAT stands for, then do let me know because I don't. Maybe Matthias Asato Telly? my best guess. Anyhow, throughout this video, I will be stripping the track down to bite-sized portions for you to learn with the tab on screen. So get excited. And if you want to download that tab, by the way, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below. So let's get straight into it. So the song starts off with this ascending sixth pattern. We've got so that's major six, major six, minor six, just sliding through that melody. And then we're gonna paint through this double stop here, barring the seven on the D and G, hammering on the G on the nine. Give the neck a little wiggle if you wanna add a bit of uh, vibrato. And then, so you see the dynamic range is escalating a little bit there, which takes you on a little bit of a journey. It's not, it's. So you see that last note is very gentle and the slide is quite forceful. And then we have this descending pattern. So played slowly, that sounds like this. So we're finishing that section on a D with a G in the bass there, and that represents the first beat of the following four bars. So after that first chord, we're gonna, I guess, sweep into the first note there, like so. And you see a lot of that is not actually picked. There's a lot of hammer-ons, pull-offs, etc. Make sure you add some vibrato there before. A lot of that, again, is not picked. It's just slides and, and hammer-ons and phrasing techniques. Then, so we start off with this very awkward one. Watch again very carefully. So we start off with this hammer on and then roll down to the next string. And then we've got to lift that third finger to allow for the 12th fret of the B and then hammer on with the little finger and notice that the third finger is still on the D string there. We want these notes to sustain as best as possible. And then now that first finger is free, we're gonna bring it up to the 10 on the E. And then we have, that's just the D major triad, hammering on with the little finger and adding a chromatic slide. And then a G, well, I guess D major triad, hammering onto G major, sliding up to A major and then Sliding down with the third and the little finger to seven and seven on the D and B. Pull off to the first finger. And then add that little finger on the G there. Now let me conclude this first section for now at a slow pace for you to try and follow along with. So this section starts on a G major chord. We've got the C position, except to allow for the melody, which is here. 
we need to fret this with the third finger leading at the top. We're skipping the D string. We've got first finger on the seven, second finger on the eight of the B, and then we're rolling through those with our pick, like so, and hammering on with the little finger. Okay, and then, So just the chromatic descent there, pulling off before. So you see we then slide up to 15, a full bend, and then sliding up to 17. And then finish 15B. Before the next phrase. So that's just a bunch of ascending and descending slides there. We're starting from the 11 to the 12 on the G to begin with, first finger, and then the octave, but just backwards. Third finger then comes onto the G, and then second finger comes to 12, 12 on the B and E, and then third finger, 11 on the G, little finger then on the bottom two strings, barring the 10th fret sliding to the seven, a chromatic slide before pulling off to the fifth fret. So again, very slowly. And then we have this beautiful chord, which to me is a bit of a highlight, really. So you could think of it as an A major, except we're adding in the 11 there, or the fourth degree. So we're starting with this chromatic slide from six and five, little finger and third finger, sliding up one fret to the A major. And then first finger, third fret on the B, and then five on the bottom. Before, one of the highlights of the song, a lot of people like this. So I think it's best I just go ahead and play that slowly for you. So we start off with a slide to the 15 on the B string. So notice there's a lot of pull-offs in there and it's important that you get those in the appropriate place because we need to finish that first half on an upstroke to lead us into the next part, which is, a, I guess, a, a little sweep. Like so. And then we get some hybrid picking and some descending sixths. Three note per string. finishing like so. So let me just go ahead and play that whole phrase for you at a slow pace for you to try and watch and follow along. And hopefully if you're doing that correctly, you will finish that on a downstroke. Now let's check out the next phrase. Okay, now there's a lot in here. The pace picks up at this point. This gets quite exciting, but let's start from the beginning. So after the vibrato and the last note of the previous phrase, you're gonna simply play the octave. And then I guess this D major double stop. And then this tritone, that's uh, eight and nine on the two middle strings. Now you're not just gonna go, we need to add the attitude in there. There's a lot of ghost notes, so look out for them. You see there's some ghost notes between every single one of those notes, and obviously there's a lot of attack and attitude at this point. Now, on that last tritone there, I do this chromatic wiggle, like so. It's a little bit challenging to get, but you can also add some vibrato if you wanna do that. That also works, so. And then. That's the phrase slow. Now, most importantly, again, attitude and dynamics and adding the ghost notes, that's gonna complete and make that phrase. So I'll play it one more time. Okay, and then we have 
this chord. That's just some ascending triads there. We've got A major, and then hammering on with the third finger, and then little finger on the B string. That's the melody. And then we're just gonna continue that melody on the next position. So that's still an A major triad. Okay, and then we finish with. So from the chord. And then we finish with some octaves, like so. So we're sliding to 14 on the A string and it's octave, which is 16. And then those are your next octaves there, 11, 12, 14, and their octaves. And then our final phrase. So that's sliding into the 15 of the B, a full bend. And then hammer on 12 to 14 on the E, sliding up to 17, and that would be a full bend as well with a nice vibrato on the end. So let me go ahead and play all of that slowly for you. And now we can go ahead and check out the next phrase. So we're gonna start this off with a bend on the 21st fret. A nice rake there, little finger on the 23. Like so. Now, if you don't have 23 or 24 frets even, then you can obviously just play with that 21st fret until you reach the respective pitches. Like so. And then we have this, uh, well, somebody called it a Richie Kotzen kind of phrase, which, yeah, I, I hear that. That's cool. And then, same pattern there. And then same pattern there. So. And then. Okay, so all of that slowly. And then we have that's quite tricky to jump to the octave there after that one there. But with a bit of practice, you'll make it work. And then and then we finish with. Now it's funny that last chord actually because I couldn't quite conclude how I wanted to finish this track. In my head I naturally heard that the last note should be that one there but I figured hmm it's kind of predictable. How about the harmony? Maybe a little bit less predictable but I like them both. So what do I do? Maybe I could play them both. So that's where this double stop comes in. That's both of those notes. And they complement each other very well. And I just gave it some vibrato to finish. So let me proceed to play all of that slowly for you to figure out. Here we go.
And there you have it. That is the entire track. Now it's only a minute long, so it's not very long. However, there's a boot full of technique and phrasing and dynamic range in there that I strongly recommend that you hone on to and focus on and, and work on in your playing. Because I think those techniques and ways of phrasing really make music interesting. Now I know that some of you are gonna ask about my approach to this and how I came up with it and perhaps my compositional insights. However, with this particular track, it actually just came from here. I wasn't necessarily even considering the chord progression. I actually didn't even anticipate on entering this contest. I just heard the backing track and thought, oh, I have an idea. And then I figured I'd play that idea and it was a start. And then I had another idea and then another one and that chained on and on. And then in the end, I figured, okay, well, I might as well enter, I guess. So for this particular track, it was a very unintentional process. And whilst that sounds magical and easy, that was very lucky because more than often it doesn't come that easy. <laughs> and if you want a greater insight into my compositional methods or even how I translate the ideas from my mind to the guitar, then I strongly recommend that you come along on board my online school. You can find the link in the description below. And there I have heaps more content beyond what you see on YouTube in much greater detail with tabs, backing tracks, on-screen diagrams, transcripts, and all the stuff that you need to get a better understanding of your guitar and music as a whole. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions or comments, then do let me know below. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.